exciting couple of days ahead. Time to start work on the next project. Tomorrow we're we'll moving the base car, the donor car, whatever you want to call it, from storage where it's been for the last three months into the new workshop. But first of all today I'm going to buy the first part of the conversion. I'm off to buy an inverter found for a good price on eBay. Unfortunately, it's about an hour's drive away, which affects the price somewhat. But it's a beautiful day, got a good audio book, and it's not too much hardship really to go and pick up the exciting first bit of my second EV conversion. And I've had a few people say, on the videos already and comment to me directly, oh what a shame you didn't capture the whole of the first conversion on video and you know I've put together a couple of videos but mostly based on photos and things. And I can't say that the opportunity to do that was my motivation for doing a second project, I just want to. The first one was so much fun and why not? But since I have that opportunity and I now have the workshop to do it in, I can capture a whole EV conversion on video. Now I'm obviously not the first person to do this, people have been doing this for you know, decades, certainly the last, a lot the last 10 years, and people like Damien Maguire have captured multiple conversions in varying levels of detail. But, you know, I'm a, novice is the wrong word now, idiot's probably the right word, my skills are, are pretty limited, um, I still have a lot of learning to do. I rely on other people a lot for help with some of the bits that I just don't get. Uh, and so hopefully I can share a bit more detail, the trials and tribulations, some of the mistakes that I made on the first one. And mostly my excitement about this opportunity to do another car, another what should be a really cool car. So in this video you'll see the new donor, I'll give you a walk around that and you'll know about as much about it as I do until I've done a proper deep dive and started to take it apart. You'll see my plans in terms of what's going to go into it, uh, what motor, inverter combination I'm going for, uh, what body shape it's going to be because it's going to be another body conversion. And you'll see a bit more of the workshop as I slowly start to turn it into a place I can actually work. It's a total mess right now. Um, a lot to be done in terms of tidying it up, starting to think about what's going to go in there, who's going to go where, because I have a partner coming with me on that space, um, what tools I want in there. Probably going to do a bit of shopping, if I'm really honest, in the next couple of days. Um, I don't want to completely strip my home workshop of tools in order to um, populate the new workshop. Um, so I need some new bits along the way. Can't go crazy, I'm not made of money. Um, but I might be a little bit spendy. Belated Christmas presents to myself, should we say. But first, I need to go and get some cash in order to pay for this inverter, because it's a cash deal. And I need to get some fuel as well. Otherwise, I'm not going to make it to the other side of the Pennines. So first stop, fuel station. Hands shaken, uh, deal done, uh, made it safely to the other side of the Pennines, and now time to head straight back again. Inverter is in the boot, uh, 80 quid, changed hands. Um, full transparency about how much I'm spending on this project. We'll see how long that transparency lasts. Back home now, and then tomorrow morning, uh, pack the car up and go and pick up the donor car and transport it to the workshop. Maybe via a shopping trip. 
good morning. It's the next day. I got up at stupid o'clock to wrap up work early. It's very, very beautiful and sunny out, but minus one. So it took me a while to clean all the uh, frost off the car. But it's play day. <laughs> So first stop is a bit of shopping, um, I've pre-ordered various bits and bobs for the workshop, um, some bags, vacuum cleaner, various other things, I've got a boot full of stuff as well that I think I'll need and then it's off to go and get the project car started so it can get onto the transporter not touched it, certainly not started it in probably two, two and a half months. So I've got a spare battery in the back, I've got jump leads, I've got this great big thing. We should have enough juice if needs be. Fingers crossed it will go. I think there's enough fuel in it. I haven't brought spare fuel, which is probably an oversight, but cross that bridge when we get to it. Um, so for now, shopping run. Three stops to make. All right, first stop, rubble sacks, vacuum cleaner, extension leads. Second stop, trolley jack, axle stands. And third stop, overalls. So I made it to the storage unit, last stop along the way until we get to the workshop. And behind me is the new project car. And if I step out the way and pan the camera down slightly, you can see what it is. It's another Z3. So I picked this up a few months ago. It's in superficially better condition than the last one. You can see that the cover's blown off since I've last been here. Same age, it's another 99. This one's got the two litre straight six. It's another MOT failure, um, partly on emissions. Um, that engine's not very happy, although it runs and drives. And there were some other failures as well. I'll post up an image of all of the problems with it at some point in this video, all of the advisories and all of the failure points. But from the outside, from this distance, it looks pretty good. Um, but once you get up close, that paint works not quite as nice as it looks in the wet. Why well, you should never buy a car in the rain. Nonetheless, um, nice leather interior and in its initial stages should be a nice little EV. So I've got the door open and the battery is predictably completely dead and equally predictably it's gone a bit mouldy in there since I last visited. I shall have to clean that up a little bit. Fortunately, I brought some uh, cleaning spray and some cloths with me on the grounds that this might have happened. So yeah, first job, clean that up a little bit, get the hood down and get the battery uh, charged up or get it to uh, jump started. Bit less of an obvious health hazard now. I've gone in and cleaned up all that mold, but you're coming back here wasn't just mould growing, clearly either condensation or a leak. They've actually got our own little farm in the back there. Interesting to see what that's like. Once the carpets are out, could be rot around the rear strut towers again, which will be fun, because that was so much fun to fix on the last car. But the battery's absolutely dead, so... Actually, don't need to pull that. In the boot, innit? Time to get the boot open. Gas struts are gone, but as you can see, it all looks pretty clean and tidy in here. Uh, but we'll find out when we 
get all the carpets out and investigate. Quite often get water down here and down, well not down here, because not down the other side, because there's a hole um, where it drains, we're on this side, on mine where the motor for the hydraulics for the uh, roof is. It's very rusty down there, so we shall see. Carpet out and actually still looking pretty clean. Got the complete toolkit there, which is nice. The original jack, spare wheel release, and battery. Probably should have disconnected this, that would have been sensible. But let's get some jump leads on it and see if we can get it going. Right, jump leads are on. We have power. We did. I suspect that's a bad connection. I actually disconnected the old battery. In okay, case so that was an extra drain on it. Hmm. No drain. Let's plug the old battery back in. The question is, is how bad is it? It's probably completely dead. So it turns out the old battery has 0.9 volts. That's not gonna cut it. So I've swapped in my spare. It's not a brilliant spare, um, but you know, for this, I'm hoping it's all right. Let's see if it starts. Let's give it a try. <laughs> we have ignition. And apart from that ticking, sounds pretty sweet. Not bad after a few months just sat here. Only the battery's the issue. Let's take a look at the engine. So this is the uh, BMW 2 litre straight six. That will be coming out of this car. If anybody's in the market for a 2 litre straight six, it's all yours. As you can see, this car looks to have been pretty well maintained, at least under the bonnet. Everything very clean, very straight, well looked after. A few issues, just that seal up there, not quite right. Other than that, so far so good. Right, this car starts, which is great. Uh, next I need to go and sort out the paperwork for shutting down my account here at the storage place. Um, and then wait for the transporter driver. Um, might even see if I can get the uh, uh, get the car out ready for him, but we shall see. Looks all right. Woo, cracky, it's icy. And we're in. A very short ride from storage to the new unit. Um, already see under the lights in here that the paintwork isn't as good as it looks when it's wet. <laughs> um, yeah, it's not immaculate by any stretch of the imagination, but that doesn't matter for what I've got planned. I'll tell you all about that in a bit. Uh, but first job is to get things a bit sorted out in here, a bit set up. Brought my wife's family bus in uh, with a load of stuff to help me clean up. And before I can tuck the Z3 back in the corner and think about getting it up on jack stands and stuff, um, I need to do some sorting out. So time to get the overalls on and uh, start cleaning.
may seem like overkill for a dusty workshop, but I'm going to be spending a lot of time on this form. So, Hoover. Right, that's probably enough tidying for now, at least to move the car into its position. I'm going to go with this space behind me um, to start with um, the higher part of the garage of the workshop where we may put a lift in at some point, we shall see. The um, reason I've gone for that side for now, um, that side's the shop, so I'm hoping it's be a bit, little bit warmer that side, a bit drier. Um, it's not as tidy. Um, You've got that door that goes onto a wall, goes nowhere. A mirror, which I'll probably take out. And um, that drain pipe in the corner as well, which occasionally makes some noise. Um, but like I say, it's high and it's bright. Um, it's got a light right overhead. Probably there is a light here that needs fixing. So um, for now, I'm just going to take one of the bright white lights that isn't flickering from the entrance and swap the bulb over. Probably it could be the condenser as well, one way or another. I'll get that sorted. Um, and then stick Z3 in this corner and get it upon some jack stands. Well, that didn't work. Um, different bulbs or something, I'm not quite sure, or I installed it wrong. It's a long time since I've touched a fluorescent bulb. Anyway, I swapped the bulbs over <laughs> and it tripped the lights out. Um, so I've just taken that one out for now. Put the other bulb back in the end, which is... Yeah, that's not coming on, so I now need two bulbs. <laughs> I'll make sure I get the right ones this time. So you're probably thinking, not unfairly, okay Tom, enough with the workshop, enough tidying, what's the plan with the car? So I had this idea halfway through the last project that it'd be really cool to have a summer car and a winter car and then you could always have one EV conversion off the road for upgrades and tweaks because the technology is changing all the time. There's always better batteries, bigger motors, whatever it may be. Now, sure, that's a bit of a luxury, but, you know, got to invest in fun, haven't you? Spend some money on play. So hence the second Z3. This is going to be the winter car. My first car, Cabrio, if you've seen the other videos, is going to stare Cabriolet. And as I think you've probably gathered by now, it's going to be converted to a Z300S a kit from Tribute Automotive that makes it look like a sort of 1950s Barchetta, Maserati style. I'm not going to go for a replica. Um, I don't want to go with, you know, Maserati badges and wheels and all that sort of stuff. Much more resto mod. But it's going to remain a cabrio. And that's great for summer, but I want something that's a bit more winter worthy and something that can be on the road when the other one's off the road, having upgrades. So, turns out Tribute Automotive do a few different kits and one of them is called the Z3 GT. This is inspired, you could argue, by a Ferrari 250 GTO, but really it's a sort of classic GT car. Two-seater, hard top, you can have a soft top, but two-seater, hard top, those fantastic sort of 50s looks. And it just really appealed to me the moment I saw it, I really fancied it. And actually, that's kind of the body shape I wanted to do for the first car. Um, but my daughter, who was working on the project with me and continues to have a strong interest in the project, um, she much preferred the, um, the Barchetta look, so we stuck with that one. It's also about two, three grand cheaper. Um, so there was that to factor in as well. So this is going to be a, a bit of more of a long-term project. There's no way I'm going to get this one on the road for next winter. Um, not unless, you know, I get another 100,000 subscribers overnight and this becomes more than just a hobby. Um, 
but the plan is to do everything on this one that I didn't do on the first one. And the first car was a budge. It was being done on the driveway, it was cold, it was wet. I didn't have the experience or the knowledge I have now. Uh, and so, you know, I did what I could with the tools I had available, the space I had available, the time I had available, and the budget I had available, frankly. Um, thankfully, the last sort of 18 months, hard as it is to say, for a lot of people, a very rough period during COVID and lockdown, it's been pretty good for me. Um, I've got a bit more time, I've got a bit more money to spend, hence I can afford, albeit shared with somebody else, I can come and afford to rent a space like this, and I can afford to start on another project. So this one's going to be a Trippy Automotive e Z3 GT, but another EV, of course. And I'm going to use, or I'm going to try to use the innards of a Lexus IS300H to drive it. So that is a gearbox motor that will replace the existing gearbox and sit in its place, uh, leaving the entire engine bay free for ancillaries, but mostly batteries, maybe even a frunk, we shall see. Um, should be more powerful than the last one. I'm not sure of the exact kilowatt rating of the two motors in that um, L210 gearbox that comes out of the IS300H. Um, motors because it's a, a CVT gearbox that uses electric drive uh, rather than mechanical drive. So it has two motors in it, a motor and a generator, but both can be driven as motors. So I'm not sure of the exact power output of it yet. To my knowledge, nobody's actually done an EV conversion using that gearbox yet, not complete, not on the road, and not using its original inverter. Um, and that's what I went to pick up yesterday, earlier in this video, was the inverter from an IS300H. Again, don't know that anyone's using that in its stock form. The plan is to use what's called a zombie inverter board, the latest iteration of the open inverter boards from, um, from Damien McGuire at EV BMW. The plan is to use one of those to drive it, so stock inverter and mostly stock gearbox slash dual electric motors, um, zombie inverter board which effectively um, commands the inverter rather than lobotomizing it with a new control board like I did for the first project. Um, and all of that's going to go in over the course of this project and you'll see everything as I do it. But this car has other roles before that because before I start converting this car, First of all, I'm gonna to have to fix it. There's reasons it failed its MOT beyond the engine. So um, I'm gonna strip the engine out. Uh, I'm gonna probably take the rear subframe off, back axle, take out the fuel tank, take off the exhaust, um, strip the interior out for a good clean and restoration. Um, and then I'm gonna put the car on a rotisserie um, and tidy it up, get underneath and really go to town on the bottom end or the underside, make sure it's really clean and sorted. But also I'm going to use this car as the development mule for the first project. Um, there's still a lot of upgrades and changes to do on that project, um, starting with, uh, well you've seen I'm already rewiring it, a uh, bigger motor going in, um, you know, rearranging under the engine bay to create more space for the heater, heater going in, still got to do the dashboard, I've got no instruments at the moment, so lots of work still to do on that one. While this one's in pieces and being stripped down, I'm going to use this as a development mule for that. So it's got the same gearbox as the other one, I think, so I'm going to pull the gearbox out for that and use that gearbox in order to make up the, the adapter plate for the new motor, and then I don't have to take the other car off the road while I'm doing it. Got the same, I think, um, engine mounts in here, which is why I'll mount the new motor off. Um, so I'll be able to mock up the engine mounts in here um, that connect to the adapter plate and hold the new motor for the other car um, in here before I just do the swap over. I'll be able to put the two cars side by side and just do a straight swap. And it's also going to be the mule for um, testing and tweaking and adding all the missing bits to the body kit for the other car. Uh, which is due to arrive in about a month, month and a bit now. Um, so that again, rather than taking that off the road, what we do the transformation, we can actually mock it all up on here, bolt all those new body panels on here, fit the lights, test the wiring, do all this stuff, and then swap it over. Only once this is done being the mule for the other car, and you can hear that drain in the background, will we actually finish the conversion of this one. I'm going to do exactly the same as I did with the other car. I'm going to convert this to electric first and get it MOT and get it licensed, get it you know, taxed or rather re-certified for tax or no tax 
as an EV, then I'm going to do the body conversion just to keep things really simple with the DVLA. I don't want to put it all in at the same time and say, oh look, I've changed the body and I've changed the drivetrain and everything else. Let's get it certified as an EV, then worry about the cosmetics. So, first things first, I really want to get a look at the underside of this. I've sort of crawled around under it while it was in the storage yard, uh, but I've not had a proper look. I've got no idea what sort of condition the underside is in. Uh, and so I'm going to get up on jack stands now. I'm going to get under there with an inspection lamp and take a good look and see what it's like under there. Okay, hold that thought. I will get it up on jack stands soon, but that might have to be the next video. Because I've just realised what time it is and I'm really hungry. So I'll stick this video together, get this one out, and next time I'll look underneath and see what it's like under there. Hoping it's not too crusty. If you enjoyed this, if you want to see progress with this EVGT and updates to my other car, my upgrades to my other EV conversion, uh, then please do like and subscribe. Um, click this thing over here. Click this one to check out the playlist for the last car. And yeah, thanks for watching.